We are having a tech talk by our speaker, Gerald Law, solutions architect, Cubol. Well, Gerald is a big data solutions architect at Cubol based in Singapore. He's helped small startups to large enterprises enable their big data use cases by helping them architect scalable data pipelines in a wide array of open source technologies such as Spark and Presto in AWS, Azure, and GCP. Thank you so much, Errol, for joining us today at the World Cloud Show. Over to you. Thank you. A very good afternoon to all of you today. All right, first, uh, before we start, let me just share my screen. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, um, let me talk about how you, uh, we can migrate an open data lake platform from on-prem to the cloud. So there are, there are various alternative migration paths to the cloud. For example, we can go ahead with a lift and shift would be to host your on-prem environment as is using VMs on the cloud. Well, the problem with this is that it requires very careful migration. The software that you use with your, your, your on-prem setup with the hardware has to be reinstalled on the cloud and it requires a lot of manual provisioning. This is very costly to maintain. To operate this will require you a lot of administration work as well. A second path to the cloud would be to re-architect your current solution. So if, if your, your current solution is in the cloud native solution, and instead it's um, an on-premise native solution, it might not work as it is, and it might not be mature in the cloud stack with unknown stack dependencies. The last solution that I would like to talk about today would be to adopt a cloud native open data lake platform. And a platform like Cubol is open, simple and secure. It allows you to run a multitude of open source engines such as Spark, Hadoop, Hive, built with cloud optimizations, auto scaling, financial governance, and role-based access controls to make sure that your data is completely secure. Let's talk about the top three reasons why people choose to migrate to the cloud. Number one, which is the most significant, would be costs. Significant lowering your TCO on, on an average customer that we have helped move to the cloud we have seen them saving 50 to 70% cost savings on average. The effort for managing a cloud infrastructure on an open data lake platform would be much easier than what you would expect as compared to on-premise. In an on-premise platform, you would realize that you have a lot of hardware that you have to maintain, as well as the integration of the infrastructure with the software that you're using. It might be a very cumbersome task the time to value is also greatly decreased if you choose a cloud solution as you can have a single platform where you can have your data science use cases, be it machine learning, artificial intelligence, data engineering, ETL pipelines, as well as ad hoc querying use cases, all in a single platform. All right, talking about significant lower TCO, Here's a slide that shows you a comparison between an on-prem solution compared to a cloud solution. If you can see, the total cost of 100 nodes of R52X large running 24 seven all year round, it's gonna cost you about $10 million in an open data lake cloud solution compared to an on-prem solution where you have the same setup that could cost you about 4.5 times more. And all this information can be easily found in the public. If you search online for prices in Cloudera and Cubo, you can take a look at this price comparison for a 64 gigabytes of memory and eight core instance, and you arrive with a pricing structure similar to this. You can reduce costs by paying only for what you use. On top of the cost savings that you already stand having a static cloud environment, you can leverage things like spot instances in the cloud. If you use GCP, they call it preemptible VMs. These 
preemptible and spot instances allow you to reduce your costs by leveraging discounts of up to 80%. For an instance that you pay a dollar an hour, you can end up paying 20 cents an hour. The agility that you get from the cloud gives you initial provisioning in minutes and hours, not months. The moment you decide to get on the cloud, we have seen customers onboarding the use cases within three to four hours, including the setup time that's required. You get to use the elasticity of the cloud, which means you can leverage all the scaling for your workloads that allows you to scale your, your, your classes up when you need the extra compute. And during idle periods, you can scale down your clusters or shut them off completely. Configuring your machines are really simple. You can choose to change the configuration of your machines or your engines the next day or even the next minute if you choose to do so. Now here's a slide that easily des describes what I've just spoken about. It is an actual customer that, that's using Cubo. And, and here's a slide that shows you the, the number of VMs that a customer is using for their cluster in the y-axis over a period of a few hours on the x-axis. As you can see here in this diagram, the number of VMs fluctuates. And the reason for this is that it adjusts according to the workload that is submitted into the cluster. So for example, if you're using widely known open source technologies like Spark, Presto, Hive, and Hadoop, which is all supported on an open data lake platform, Cubo has designed a workload aware auto scaling algorithm specially fit for each of these engines. And it, it's gonna scale your cluster exactly accordingly to the workloads that you submit to it. So whether it's a day where you submit a heavy workload, that's where a cluster can be scaled up to where it needs to be and scaled down when the workloads are small. If you can see here, this cluster compromises of 50% spot instances, 50% on-demand instances, which means half of these instances that you see here are leveraging an 80% discount. And if you notice, there are a lot of white spaces in between these workloads as well. And this is something that you can never achieve on-prem on as it will be cumbersome to turn off your machines when you don't need them and turn it back on. It is a, is a, it is a very tiresome task that is dreadful for data administrators. These things can be automated on the cloud. And if you can imagine, an on-prem on version of this diagram will look like a big dark blue rectangle that fills up the whole chart. The cost savings that you notice here is obviously the white spaces and the light blue rectangles that you see on the screen. You get an opportunity to get much higher productivity as well. For example, a super app in Southeast Asia that does ride hailing, food delivery. We have had this customer use Cubo, manage over 50 classes for over a thousand of users with just one data administrator. On an average, we do see one admin serving 10 users before Cubo on an on-prem setup. But when customers migrate to Cubo, an average admin gets to serve about 100 users. And that gives you exponential productivity when it comes to hiring developers compared to admins, and it helps you save a lot of costs in, in this aspect as well. You get to leverage a single platform for all your big data use cases. For example, if you have streaming analytics, if you have machine learning and AI use cases, you can use open source engines that are very popular suited for this, like Spark. An open data lake platform like Cubo allows you to leverage optimizations built on the cloud, resiliency to spot instances interruptions, and you get to use this for any engine that you choose. For example, if you have multiple data warehouses spread out across your ecosystem, and an ad hoc analytic tool like Presto allows you to connect all this data together, together with the Hive Metastore and the Hive engine that you use on your object stores, like S3, 
GCS, Block Storage on Azure. If you choose your cloud, you can run it on Kubo. So we do support AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, and Kubernetes setup as well. So if, if you have a BI tool that you like to integrate, such as Luca, Tableau, these integrations can be easily done on a platform that's highly secure, that allows you to configure fine-grained role-based access controls for your users, as well as financial governance over the entire platform. So let's talk about what the effort looks like. First, it takes three steps to migrate your workloads. We've seen customers do this from a range of an hour to about five hours. Okay, so usually we, we, we see a typical customer migrating their workloads and running them in the first three days that they start using Kubo. The first step is to assess the kind of cost savings that you'll be getting from the cloud, the kind of workloads that you like to migrate, and the data that you like to migrate. Migrating data is really easy, whether you have an on-prem setup that's using Hadoop for your big data use cases, or whether it's a cloud-to-cloud -cloud migration from S3 to GCS, from Azure to S3, or you know, vice versa. It is all supported using the, the, the platform. So migrating your workloads is simple as well. If you're using an open source technology right now, such as Jupyter, Spark, Hive, and Hadoop, you can migrate those scripts, SQL queries, commands, and dashboards really easily into Kubo. This can be driven by our professional services, supported by system integrators, cloud themselves, or solutions architects like myself. Here is a, a slide that shows you how you can easily estimate the cost savings you tend to get from leveraging cloud services if you're currently on an on-prem setup. So you can use these slides later to try out this tool and it's gonna give you a good estimation on what kind of costs that you stand to, to, to save if you were to make this move to a cloud service. Modernization phases, which is steps four, five, and six, mainly tune the workloads that you have migrated earlier in the first three steps. And this means tuning your infrastructure, such as using the right VMs, optimizing your workloads by leveraging the best configurations that you can, can use for your Spark workloads, for example, and configuring your user access to integrate with third-party BI tools, automation with our SDKs and REST APIs openly and publicly documented for you, as well as configuring your cost explorer to ensure full financial governance to know exactly how much you're spending on each different workload. Post-migration phases include training your users, and this can be done really easily. Kubo offers a wide array of different areas where you can learn to use the platform. We conduct virtual in-person workshops, documentation and online courses, something called the Kubo University where you can learn how to use the platform together with the open source technologies available out there in the market. We do have specialized support that provides you with 24 seven technical support for any engine that you're using that's provided by Kubo, specialized by data processing engines you, you also get specialized support from solutions architects from the platform as well. So here's a success story. One of the famous unicorns in Indonesia, Bukalapak, is currently using Kubo. So they had a need to migrate their on-prem ETL data pipelines into the cloud. And this is huge amounts of data. They needed a solution that works with Google Cloud where they could analyze data in their Google Cloud storage, as well as BigQuery seamlessly. So as an open data lake platform, we allow users to read data from wherever it resides from in the cloud, run them using data science workloads to train 
different kinds of engines from machine learning and AI algorithms. For, for their data engineering workloads, such as their ETL pipelines that they have to constantly run in a re repeat, uh, repeatable format, they use Airflow, uh, a, uh, an Airflow cluster to integrate them with Kubel clusters and run them seamlessly together with auto scaling. So they, they, they have new hires constantly coming into the platform and they spend minimal effort trying to set up this data platform and clusters. Managing the infrastructure is really simple when it's all automated for you. A self-service data science platform where you can run both data engineering workloads, data science workloads in, in a secure environment is how they benefited most from using us. So here's the end of why migrate with Kubel. We have eight years of experience from migrating use cases on-prem to cloud. We are one partner where we give you a wide array of open source solutions where you can use them in a single platform. Please do visit our booth if you have some time and we'll tell you more about it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gerald, for joining us today on the World Cloud Show. We had a great time viewing your presentation.